first and foremost, in fact, before even thinking about customer, you'll have to think about society. What the society is going to stop you for not doing it or taking a chance. And that's the biggest difference between businessman and entrepreneur because in this case, you're going to be taking an endeavor which is full of risk, right? And you are doing it out of your passion and going beyond the norms of social um, status quo. Hi guys, I'm Santos, founder and CEO of Explara. It's a SaaS platform for event ticketing, online selling, and membership management. I welcome you to Backstage with the Millionaires. Um, today I'm going to talk about India's startup ecosystem and SaaS as a kind of evolution over the last 10 years. I was very clear and dad used to work in a bank and uh, banks used to give loans to small businesses and I've heard how small businesses have taken loans from the bank and then become bigger. So it was very evident and clear in my mind that I would go and do it, but I didn't jump in in 18 or I didn't jump in without completing the education. You can't do that in India's, you know, today you can do it. The world is accepting that you can jump out of your college and say, hey, I'm going to start, but not in my case, right? So you have to go through that. Uh, you know, phase. So when you look back um, how things have been in India today, it's much easier for any family to say, oh, what is a startup, right? How do you start a business? But if you go back 15 years back, you know, people didn't know what is the difference as such. And the social uh, norms are that, hey, you've done a good education, go in and then just just do a job and get good money and, 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 and make money, make more money. So when I gave up my job in Finland, I used to work for a year with a startup there, way back in 2000, and I came back to Bangalore to start to pick up a job in a startup, which was seven people in 2000. My dad called his colleagues in bank saying, can you just speak to him? So there is something wrong. Uh, he had a job in Finland with uh, and a high paying dollars. He has left that and coming back to India. How is this possible, right? So that's the world that we all have gone through. In fact, a generation of ours has gone through. The next generation is much, much clearer what they want to do and they have absolute freedom to do. But in our case, that's not the case. So we had to figure out how do we overcome that barrier, right? First and foremost, in fact, before even thinking about customer, you'll have to think about society. What the society is going to stop you for not doing it or taking a chance. And that's the biggest difference between businessman and entrepreneur because in this case, you're going to be taking an endeavor which is full of risk, right? And you are doing it out of your passion and going beyond the norms of social um, status quo and, and even convincing the parents of why is this even makes sense? You know, are, you, are you really looking for a lot of money? Why need to pick up a better job? So the answer is always about money how much more you can make in this, in a year, in a two. Now it's getting better, but if you look back as a history, we all wanted to make money, quick money, quick box. You know, we have to be rich. And if that can be done in a job, absolutely don't spend in anywhere else, right? That's the norm. India didn't have successful uh, entrepreneur kind of generation as such. Those who have been existing in India, they are all, you know, been built by business houses with the three to four generations. So, Somebody from that family can be easy, but like you and me or somebody else who had no background, there was no generation in India who says, hey, we have been an entrepreneur. If you come, we'll train you. So today I can mentor 10 of them and happily hear them out and give my piece of suggestions. But in our time, absolutely there is nobody. And if I reflect my own starting up in 2008 when I started up, I think it was too early. And I just hoped that India is going to go too fast. And most of the times, we always reflect a market situation based upon where we live, right? So I used to live in London, worked in 10, 11 years, worked for eBay, worked for BBC. So I always thought the world is moving faster. But that's the, uh, you know, sort of uh, catch. The catch is that the Southeast Asian countries, the emerging countries, uh, South American countries, a lot of countries are still going to catch up. They are going to take their own sweet time because there are regulations, there are the frameworks not in the place. So what you can start in, in another country, it's not possible. For example, you couldn't start a payment gateway company in 2008-9. You couldn't even get a payment gateway for months and months. So when I applied for a payment gateway in 2008, it took three months to get a approval to say yes or no. Today you can get in in 24 hours. 
right? So there's a huge change. So today, if somebody is going to go after fintech in India, it, they can build a multi-million business today because the market is ready. Your access to information is ready. The legal frameworks allows you to do that. It is not anti government anti thing economy and all that sometime as a entrepreneur you you will be picked by the problem then you picking your problem so i picked up a problem and say hey this is a great area to go after and solve it right bringing people together using event as a software mechanism to say hey you don't have to use an excel spreadsheet a checkbook and a you know phone call to figure out whether you are coming to my event or not just go to the website fill it up and done everything in fraction of a second, right? So that's a SaaS problem that I picked it up and came back to India. In fact, remotely bootstrapped it for a couple of years and came back to India. So we grew from zero to a couple of crores in Indian rupees or a half a million uh, in Indian rupees. And then I came in, right, and started growing the uh, business. But then we, I was ahead of time, right? SaaS as a concept, it didn't exist in 2008. The mindset to say, hey, a software is going to do my job, not a people. Oh no, hold on. If, if, it's, if somebody else is going to do a job, it will do it for free because I can get that done. But if it is software, then I have to pay. I am not ready to pay. So your acceptance, the customer's acceptance to say that the software is going to do better than a person is impossible in, in the context of 2008-9, right? So I think that if I reflect today, only in the time frame between 12, 13, 14, when the market started exploding because you know people realize that there are their competitors or their counterparts in other countries are doing extremely well, right? So the businesses which are operating here, they said, hey, look, it's not about just accounting. How about task management? How about bringing collaborating with people so that I can do it faster. How about bringing messaging to the, uh, you know, not just the consumer, but business. So the problems that they could, they had, but they were ignoring, uh, thinking that software cannot be this answer to it. We would still put people into problem to solve problems. When they looked at the counterpart of the world business, they realized, no, this is not the world that's going to be. And look, here are already local players who are doing it. So it's all about increasing the productivity, efficiency, and making make sure that you are able to generate revenue. You are able to grow your company by using a software and minimizing your errors. Because if you're putting people, there are chances that there will be errors. Like we all make errors. So the mindset about SaaS in India has taken a huge, you know, from zero almost or non-existing kind of thing to an 100x acceptance level to say, yeah, there is a tool that can help me to do it. SaaS is the future of India in a way because it is going to drive such a large uh, country with so much of population and inter-networked uh, you know, roles to play within state and within people and departments and all. You cannot get this done in, in this chaos. You need to simplify in the back end and, and, and somewhere else where there could, uh, you know, people could solve it for you by using deploying software. So I think India is witnessing that SaaS. Uh, I would say that I took uh, the faith in it by uh, thinking, but thinking a little ahead of time. Mm -hmm. When you enter any problem statement and you just want to go after and say, I'll solve it. Just watch out whether you are doing too much ahead of time, right? That's the only thing that I would derive. But if you are passionate about it, you will still find out your way, be around and um, start to solve in a bigger way because you have got a better understanding about what system didn't work and what system could work in the coming days. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any queries or comments, please feel free uh, to, to add the comments in the video. If you liked it, please share it with your friends. I'm also very active on the social media. Feel free to connect. And for uh, knowing more about Explara, go to www.explara.com. If you have any ideas around online selling, even ticketing, even management, feel free to talk about Explara with your friends and family. Thank you so much.